In today's video, I'm gonna be jumping onto Lightroom and sharing with you my secret on how you can create this dark, moody, green effect in your photos just using Lightroom. And I'm gonna start right now. So I went on a rustic horse photo shoot in Gloucester and I really liked the photos, but what I wanted to do is end up with a bit more of a darker, more moodier theme to my photos. So today I'll share with you my four step process and how you can basically darken and create more of a moodier green feel to your photos. So let's start off with step one, which is global adjustments. Okay, so the first step in step one is cropping. And I like doing this, the very first thing to make sure my composition is exactly how I like it. So what I do is go over to my crop tool. I might crop in a little bit. I might go for something like so. I just find that edge of that sky is very distracting in this photo. So I might go for a crop like so in this photo. Okay, so once you're happy with your composition overall crop, I actually like going in and basically removing any spots and blemishes. In this example, I am really finding that sky is a major distraction. So what I might do is go over to my removal tool, making sure drainage fill is selected. What I'm gonna do is make a quick selection, just removing that section of the sky because I am finding that very, very annoying. So create a nice big selection Make sure everything is selected around it. Go for something like so. And hopefully, although Photoshop Generative Fill would do a better job, let's see if we can do this in Lightroom. Select a nice big selection like so. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and click Apply. And let's hope Lightroom Classic can successfully remove the sky. And is kind of. So if we do step two and step three. Let's go for step two, because it's a little bit smaller. And let's end up with that. I'm pretty happy with that. Although I'd probably go into Photoshop and remove it later. Let's call that step five and we'll do that at the end. Okay, so let's go over to our basic corrections and make a couple of adjustments. Now, I'm pretty happy with the white balance, although I do find it's because of how much yellow is in this photo, finding it's running a little bit warm. So I might go for 5,500 Kelvin instead of 5,600 Kelvin because I did shoot in manual white balance. Anytime I'm shooting outside, I usually try and just shoot at 5600 Kelvin. And then what we'll do is we'll keep the tint alone. Now in this image, I might brighten it up ever so slightly, but not by much. I might go 0.3 of a stop. And then in contrast, I'm actually gonna reduce that down ever so slightly because we're gonna be adding in contrast later on using the tone curve. I like reducing it ever so slightly in the contrast slider, then adding a little bit more in using the tone curve. And then with highlights here, I'm gonna actually drop that down by a decent amount. So I might drop it down by around about minus 60. And then with the shadows here, I'm gonna increase those to around about plus 30. Then with whites here, I'm gonna increase those again. Again, remember to look at your histogram, make sure you are not clipping when increasing and decreasing the whites. I'm probably gonna go for plus 15 in the whites and then minus 15 in the blacks there. Now let's move on to texture, clarity, and dehaze. So I like adding in a little bit of texture, but not by much. Clarity, I actually like reducing that down uh, just to soften out those skin tones and overall soften up that background a little bit. I might drop that down by around about minus 25, the maximum I would usually do. And then with dehaze here, because there's a little bit of haze in the background, we're not getting true black, as you can see. I might go to dehaze here and increase that by around about 10% not by much. And then what we're gonna do is actually leave vibrance and saturation alone. We'll actually change that when we color grade our photo simply because we are we're really affecting those greens brightness. So we might need to go into vibrance and saturation later on just to make some minor tweaks there. Okay, so let's go out of the basics panel and let's drop down to tone curve. Make sure in our overall exposure point curve here. And what I'm gonna do is make a very soft S curve. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that up ever so slightly. Go for something like so. And then what I'm gonna do is also bring down those blacks there, or those shadows, as you can see, adding in that contrast. But we can add in the exact amount of contrast we want in the highlights and shadows in the tone curve versus simply using the contrast slider, which globally adds in contrast everywhere. So we've got a little bit more control if we do it in the tone curve there. So you can see we're cutting down on that haze actually just by lowering that down ever so slightly. And then I wanna add a bit more of a moodier look to this image. So what I'm gonna do is actually go to the blacks here, I might bring those up ever so slightly. So I might actually go for an effect like so. So we're not having true black and you can see that within our histogram, there's no longer any blacks in our photo, but it's uh, just enough to make it still look black. What I might actually do is bring that up ever so slightly, go for something like so. 
And that's pretty much all we're gonna be doing in step one. So, so far, what I can do is show you the before and the after. Now, I am actually finding that really annoying that that sky is still there. So let's see, let's go for an attempt number two. This is why I was saying, I made a video about it recently, uh, Lightroom Classics AI is just not as good as Photoshop's because you've got no prompt. I could just say, remove sky, and it would do it really well in Photoshop, but there's no prompt in Lightroom, which is really annoying. So we go ahead and click apply, and hopefully, step two, let's see if this works. Okay, so it actually has made no difference whatsoever. Let's go for step two, and what I might do is just simply crop in ever so slightly. Just remove it as much as I can. Um, I would do this in Photoshop, but what I'm gonna try and do in this video is just stick to using Lightroom. So immediately that looks way nicer. I just found that as a massive distraction in that top left-hand corner. So let's go for an effect like so. Let's bring that down a little bit more. Okay, so I'm really happy with that composition now. Okay, now I'm happy with all the global changes. Let's move on to step two, which is color grading. Okay, so in color grading, we predominantly wanna be affecting the greens and yellows found within the photo. We can do this using three specific tools. We'd be using the color mixer tool, the color grading tool, as well as the calibration tool. Okay, so let's make the biggest change first, which will be in the color mixer tool. Now the color mixer tool is split into three sections. You've got hue, saturation, and luminance. Hue is the type of color, so blue is a hue, red is a hue, things like that. Saturation is the intensity of that color, so how much blue is in your photo, how strong, how intense it is. And then lastly is your luminance, which is the brightness of that color, so how bright or how dark your blue is. And that's luminance and saturation is what we're gonna be mainly changing within the green and yellow sliders found within the hue to actually darken and make a bit more of a moodier green effect in our photo. Okay, so let's start off with hue first. Now we're going to leave reds and oranges alone because they're predominantly found in the skin tones. And because we've got a model in this photo, we don't wanna be removing those or affecting those skin tones. So we'll be skipping those out. And let's go to yellow here. Now with yellow here, I'm gonna increase it by a little bit. I'm gonna bring it by a plus 10. This will add a little bit more green to the greens. Although that sounds a bit odd, but there's a lot of, especially in foliage, you can see there's a lot of yellows in it. So we wanna affect yellows and greens here. And then we've got the greens here. I'm gonna increase those by plus 20 there, adding in, again, a little bit more green, a little bit more vibrancy, a little bit more natural green. Then we've got aquas here. What we're gonna do is drop those down. We're gonna go for minus 10 in this example, but again, not massively, because it does start affecting the dress here, which is something we want to do want to avoid doing that. And then what we'll do is go to the blues here again, same situation, what we'll do is we'll drop those down again. We'll probably go for minus 30 in this example. Okay, so that's all we're gonna be doing in the hues. Let's move over to saturation, where we'll be making the biggest change. Really drop down those yellows, so we'll probably go for minus 30. And then we're gonna go for the biggest change, we're gonna do minus 50 in the greens there. Really drop those down. We can see we're really taking out that brightness, although we will affect it more in luminance as well. Now with aquas here, we're gonna drop those down as well. We could probably go for minus 10. And then blues here, we're also gonna drop those down as well, by around about minus 25 in this example. Okay, so that's all we're gonna be doing in saturation. Again, leaving purples and magentas alone. And let's lastly move over to luminance. Now we're here, I actually like brightening up the yellow slightly. So we'll go for a plus 10 there. But with greens, we're really gonna drop those down. Again, drop those down by around about minus 50. Again, go for that more darker, more moodier effect to the photo. And it's the same situation with aquas. We'll drop those down as well by minus 50. And then we're also gonna do the same with blue, but not by much. We're gonna do it by half, so minus 25. And then we're also gonna leave purple and magentas alone. So already, we've made a pretty decent impact but we still wanna go further and make a bit more of a moodier effect. So if I just do the before and after of just the hue, saturation and luminance siders, we can see we've made a big impact. So let's drop out of color mixer tool and now go to color grading. Now color grading is one of my favorite tools to create this moodier effect because we can predominantly affect the highlights and shadows independently from each other. It used to be called split toning, but now because we can affect the midtones, it's now simply just called the color grading panel. So what we do is firstly select the shadows. Now your main thing can think, oh, let's add in green, but no, don't add in green because it makes everything look really peculiar. 
what we're going to do is actually add in blue. We want to add in a nice dark blue. So I'm going to choose a hue of 225. That's my favorite, just because I'm on this dark blue here. And then what we're going to do is go to our saturation and we're going to go ahead and add quite a lot in. We're actually going to add in probably around about 15% saturation to that. And you can see we're adding in this nice effect. I also like going to the luminance here and also dropping that down as well. So I'm probably going to drop that down by around about minus 25 in this example. And for the highlights, because we've added in a lot of blue, we want to add in its complementary color to combat that in the highlights. And blue, the opposite of blue, if you have a look at the color wheel, is yellow. So instead of adding in blue, what we're going to do is add in yellow. I like adding in a hue of around about 35. 35 to 50 seems to work quite nicely. Then simply zoom into your highlight section and then work out how much you want. So I'm going to probably going to go for around about 20 or maybe 15 in this example. Might add a little bit more yellow to it. So I might go for a hue of 45 instead. Again, add a little bit more. Okay, so let's go for a saturation of 25 there. Now I'm finding that it's a little bit still a bit too green. I wanna add a little bit more blue. So I might go for 25 here as well. So I'm gonna show you the before and after. We've added in a little bit more of a cooler tone to the background, but still keeping those warm tones in the foreground there, which is really important. You want a nice balance in between the two there. Okay, so let's turn off color grading here. And what we'll do is drop down to calibration. Now in calibration, we're not gonna be making a massive change. Probably just going to the hue here, increasing that up by around about 10%. And we're also going to be going to the green here and also increasing that by 10%. Now, if you wanna know more about what the calibration tool does, which is a really helpful tool, especially when color grading, go ahead and watch this video here, which is my masterclass tutorial on just the calibration tool. But in simple terms, basically all it does is it changes your global color of red, green, and blue. We all know that all colors are made up of red, green, and blue. It's how sensors work, it's how screens work, basically how everything in photography works. So it allows us to calibrate those specific colors and it creates really cool effects. And that's all we're gonna be doing pretty much in this video here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off calibration. And as you can see, we've pretty made a, already a good chunk, but now what we're gonna do is really emphasize it by using masks. So, so far, here is the before and after. Let's jump into step three, which is masking. Okay, so in masking, what we're gonna do is head over to our masking panel. We're gonna probably indicate about three or four masks in this example. So first thing we wanna do is add a bit more of a darkened effect. Now, we don't want to darken the subject because we just that photo will just make it look darker. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select the subject itself. So we're just selecting the subject here. Then what we're going to do is subject select. We're going to go ahead and invert it, just selecting the background here. Then all I'm going to do is go to exposure here and simply drop that down. Now, don't drop it too far because it just looks fake. What we're going to do is drop it down by a really small amount. Honestly, a small amount really does make an impact. So. 0.1 makes a decent impact. So already, if I do the before and after, it's made it ever so, makes the subject pop while also making the background nice and dark. As well as that, we also wanna create a linear gradient. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new mask. We're gonna go down to linear gradient. Now I'm finding the bottom section of this photo still quite bright. So what I'm gonna do is basically affect the whole bottom of this image. So I'm gonna go for something like so, and then I'm going to drop this down. Now it's up to you if you also want the actual dress or any part of your model to also be affected. If you don't want it to be affected, you can actually go into that mask and intersect it with your subject, then invert it. So as you can see, we're not affecting the subject, but also affecting the background there. Now, I'm not a massive fan. I like adding in a little bit more of a softer look. So to do so, I'm just gonna go back and just have a simple linear gradient there but I'm not gonna drop it down by as strong as amount. I'm just gonna go for around about 0.5 there. Now, anytime we darken the photo, we also want to brighten it in another section. So what I'm gonna do is create a new mask, drop down to radial gradient this time, and I'm also gonna create a radial gradient just affecting this top section here. So I'm gonna add a little bit more brightness, about 0.5, the same amount I did, but negatively in the bottom half of this image. Then I'm actually gonna go and uh, remove a little bit of texture, remove a little bit of dehaze, or a little bit of clarity and a little bit of dehaze, just to create a bit more of a softer effect in the top section of this image. I might actually elongate it a little bit, just so it's affecting a bit more of that image there. Might rotate it slightly. 
So we'll go for something like so. What I might actually do, I might actually bring it down a little bit more. Go for something. Okay, so I might go for 0 0.25 stops instead of 0.1. And as you can see, it's made a pretty decent impact. Now, if you're still finding the model or your subject is a little bit dark, all you'll need to do is work out where your eyes are drawn to. So me, it's gonna be the face and the horse here. I'm gonna go to a radial gradient here, make a decent sized radial gradient, and then literally just add in a couple stops of brightness. I might even go for just 0.1 of a brightness there just brightening that section, the kind of focal point of your image. And what we can do is show you what we've done with masks so far. So if I do the before and after, we've kind of used masks to draw your attention to the most important part of your image. So we're darkening the bottom section of the photo, we're brightening the top section here, and then we've added in a little bit of a boost mask there, just a small little radial gradient mask there, just to add a little bit more interest to where your eyes get drawn to. And that's all we're gonna be doing in masks. You could go a little bit more extreme if you wanted to. So you could go even darker in the bottom section. I might go for a little bit darker as well. I might go for an entire stop. So I go 0.1 stop there. Um, I might go reduce that down a little bit or maybe make it better, maybe turn it a bit more. There we go. I think I'm pretty much happy with that. So that is step three. Let's move on to step four, which is effects. Now in the effects panel, we're only gonna be doing one thing. We're gonna be doing is going down to our effects here. We're just gonna be affecting our post cropping vignette and also our grain. So post cropping vignette, I like adding in a nice vignette for this. So I'm gonna go for a quite a strong vignette in this example. So I'm probably gonna go for minus 25. Now that is way too strong. So what I like doing is just going to my feather here and increasing that all the way to 100. So we're adding in a nice, soft, very subtle vignette to this photo. And then I also like adding in a little bit of grain. It really adds to that moody feel to this photo. So again, to do this, my little secret on how you can add in the right amount of grain, zoom into an area with a decent amount of contrast, a decent amount of detail, then simply add in a tiny amount of grain, reduce size down to zero, and reduce roughness down to zero, and then work out until you've got the right amount of grain. So I'm probably gonna add in around 25 in this example. Then with size here, again, add that in until you're happy with the size. So for this, I'm gonna go for 20. And then roughness here, again, add it in until you're happy with that roughness. So reduce it a little bit further. But I always like starting from zero. So if you start from zero, it's a really good slowly adding it in, you find the exact amount for your photo. Because otherwise, the de default settings just, I think, ruin an image, I genuinely do. So just go for the right amount. So I'm probably gonna go for 30 in this example. So 25, 20, 30 for grain there. If I zoom out, I definitely think that is the right amount of grain. And there we go. That is how you can create this nice, dark, moody theme to your photo. Now in this example, what I'd probably do is the generative fill did let me down. So I'd actually see these little green, these are little like flowers, I think. Uh, this is a horse meadow, so I think those are little buttercup flowers. I'd actually go into generative fill and remove those, but I'm not gonna do that in Lightroom because I think the Lightroom generative fill is, I wouldn't say it's rubbish, but it's nowhere near as good as Photoshop generative fill. As you saw earlier, I just wanted to remove that sky. There's no way of prompting it, which is super, super annoying. So what I'd probably do is jump into the Photoshop and go and basically fix all those changes. But this is predominantly all I'm gonna be doing in Lightroom. So what I can do is show you the before and show you the after. And in Photoshop, this is my final outcome. So here is the original raw image. And here is the final image after all four steps, plus that extra little generative fill step at the end there. And as you can see, I've ended up with beautiful moody green effect. And there we have it. That is how you can create this dark moody green effect in your photos just using Lightroom. And if you like this effect and wanna support the channel, head over to my website, where I've got a whole range of custom Lightroom presets available. So if you wanna support the channel, plus get some awesome presets to really speed up your editing workflow in Lightroom, make sure to go ahead to the link in the description. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.